Uh, take all the questions that I raised here earlier to the expert joining us on the broadcast. We have with us Charlotte uh, Littlewood. She's somebody who's a journalist, researcher, has written extensively about these issues. Charlotte, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. My question to you is about the recent attacks, especially led by Khalistani groups. And uh, you've, we've seen these kind of attacks happening in different countries, in UK, Canada, and the latest one in San Francisco. As a researcher, what's your understanding? How are these groups able to carry out such dastardly attacks? So I think this is really, really concerning for us here in the UK. And um, the pro Khalistan separatist movement is very poorly understood. Um, and government officials, even those that are tasked with working in counterterrorism, have a really poor understanding of Khalistan extremism. Mm. Um, so when I worked recently around the attack on the High Commission here in the UK and then the subsequent um, attack on a Sikh family who didn't believe in, in the need for a Khalistan state, um, a Khalistan state that my uh, experience was that the prevent those that are working in counterterrorism here in the UK, the prevent officials had a distinct lack of understanding of Khalistan extremism in its entirety. Mm. Um, I was mm. met with such ignorance that one prevent official said to me, this is more of an India problem and not something that we're going to be concerned about here mm. in the UK. Mm. I do think that is beginning to change. Now we are seeing these replica attacks like we've seen in San Francisco. Um, that is now a changing sort of mood around Khalistan extremism. Right, and there is more right. discussion amongst counterterrorism officials here in the UK. And they are turning to look at new, a new training and a renewed understanding of this specific space. So, so when you say that there's a lack of understanding, is it about downplaying the severity of the problem? And is that something which they're doing consciously? Would it be correct to say that the authorities have not acted proportionately and the response from the Western nation not to be more stringent when it comes to issues like these? I think the understanding of the severity of this issue um, is lacking, but I still find mm. that very mm. surprising. When we look at the terrorist attack in Canada, um, and that's the largest terrorist attack that's ever happened in Canada, was mm. perpetrated by Khalistani extremists. Um, so it's not without there being plenty of information out there on this kind of extremism and the dangers um, of it. I think it is the fact that we have become bogged down in counterterrorism around issues that sort of coming from um, Salafist jihadist ideologies. Mm. So ISIS, Al Qaeda, and this form of terrorism is what has consumed counterterrorism here in the UK for so many years. Mm. And now looking at extremism that's coming from the subcontinent um, yeah. and looking at even what we've seen in the UK with acts against Hindu community. And now what we're seeing with this extreme Khalistani movement, it is just something that experts in the field have not readied themselves for yeah. um, and have spent so much time looking at Salafist jihadist ideology that now looking at what is coming from the subcontinent is something unfamiliar um, with a distinct lack of expertise. Distinct lack of expertise. Going forward, what is it that these countries can do? Let's talk about, say, UK, America, Canada. What can the governments in these countries do more? Is it about acting more stringently? Is it about taking these issues far more seriously than they have in the past? Yeah, absolutely. Again, I think it's ignorance. We've also seen a, an element of infiltration as well. We have a pro Khalistan separatist um, infiltration into into Parliament via mm. APPGs, our all parliamentary groups. Yeah. Um, so there is an issue in which this ideology is actually managing to have influence at high level. Mm. And then that's met with an ignorance from those working in counterterrorism and policing, mm. which therefore makes it very difficult to counter. Mm. Um, but I do think we're seeing a change. We're seeing a shift in the mood from especially the prevent teams about understanding Khalistan extremism. We right. recently had a report launched in the UK, the Colin Bloom Faith Report, which had a large section afforded to Khalistan extremism Extremism. And there is just a beginning of an energy to research, understand and counter mm. this particular form of extremism. So I do think we're seeing a shift, but it's taken a long time and it has been too slow to mm. move from our emphasis on Salafist jihadist ideologies and that threat to now this diasporic threat. Um, and, and I think piquing the interest of, of the media has been the moving in of uh, hate preachers from Bangladesh and Pakistan. We recently had 
a hate preacher coming from Bangladesh and um, that's called for, for the, the death of blasphemers and yeah. the death of Ahmadis um, and being very anti-Semitic. And these issues that are coming from the subcontinent, these issues around extremism that are unfamiliar to our counter-terrorism professionals Absolutely. are all sort yeah. of being looked at now in greater detail. And that does include Palestine extremism. Charlotte Littlewood, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast and sharing your expertise on this important issue.